today we will be discussing case creation in, and data entry in one of the safety database okay so safety database is basically a database in which pharmaceutical companies document the adverse event details okay there are multiple databases that are currently in the market, uh, like Arcus, LSG, Data PV, and others also. However, more companies throughout the world is using Arcus database. And the second number is of LSG. So here in this, we will be talking about uh, the how to create a case and how to do the data entry in Arcus safety database. Okay. Now, what is the requirement of this safety database? So, whenever any adverse event is reported, that is in structured form. Structured form means uh, patient, healthcare professionals, or anybody who reports it, they report it by their own, uh, like might be telling the verbatim of the adverse event or uh, different concomitant medications they are taking history and in a haphazard way not in a way and uh, other usage of the safety databases first is to make the adverse event data structured second thing is to code those things into a medical terminology so that if any analysis is required then that medical terminology can be utilized. Okay. So let's begin. So first of all, there are three types of reports that we can get in the form of adverse event. First is clinical trial reports. Those are also known as solicited reports and pharmacovigilance terminology. Those are reported from the clinical trials. Like if any adverse event is reported and uh, phases one, two, three of clinical trials, that adverse event will be reported to the company and then ultimately to the regulatory authority through the safety database. All those reports are categorized as solicited reports. Second report is spontaneous report that is also known as unsolicited reports. Now these spontaneous reports are directly reported by the customers, basically, consumers, healthcare professionals, any caregivers, sales representatives, so any reports that is directly from user and user. And it's in the phase four, that is post surveillance. All those reports are known as spontaneous reports. And the last one is scientific literature reports, as the name suggests, the reports that are originating from the literature, so it's literature articles. We discussed about the search in the previous session. So all the adverse event reports that are originating from these literature articles categorized as scientific literature reports. To determine the validity of the case means that the case is valid or invalid. So uh, all the reports, all the cases that are reported to a pharmaceutical company will be documented in the safety database. And then it will be categorized as valid or invalid as per the information provided in that particular report. So to categorize the case as valid, we have four criteria for it. And any one of these criteria is missing, the report will be invalid. First is identifiable report. Right? So here it's not mentioned as only reporter, it should be identifiable. That means anything should be present for the reporter through which that reporter can be identified. For example, name, phone number, address, or email address. Okay. Then we have identifiable patient. So the patient should also be identifiable like its initial or name, date of birth. Any of such details should be the gender of the patient. So any of that information must be there in the report to make the patient identify. Then ultimately product and event. So there should be a product associated with the event. 
if a person reports that I experienced something from some drug and don't know the product name of that drug, so that will be invalid. There should be a specific name of the drug. Then event, of course, if the event is not reported on the product, then it's, it's uh, not valid. It will not be an impulsive hit case. Now let's talk about the different steps that are involved in the case processing. That means doing the data entry and the steps in safety database. So the steps are triage, bookend, that is case bookend, data entry, peer review, medical review, and distribution and submission. Okay. These are the different steps in the case processing in the safety database. So let's talk about each step in detail. So we'll be talking about these steps in detail in the coming slides with these screenshots of safety database Argus. Okay. Now in the Argus safety database, we have these tabs or different uh, procedures that are involved in case processing. Initial case entry, workplace filtering, case acceptance, so stock and additional information tab. So these are the names we will be talking about them okay, in these slides. Don't worry, you will get all the details about them. First tab that we have in our course is work list tab. So as you can see from the screenshot, it will be work list and below worksheet work list, there are different options to choose from. So it is used to manage new or open cases. Open cases means where the complete processing of the case is not done. Uh, the last step of processing, as we seen in the previous slide, is distribution or submission. So if distribution or submission is completed, then the case can be closed. But if the case is not closed, then we can we need to uh, that open case will be seen in the open option of our list. Okay. And the new option is when you want to create any new case or you want to see any new case that is created. Identify and prioritize the workload. That means it will show that which case is basically due on which date. Due means submission to the regulatory authority. Okay, because there is a particular timeline associated with each case that it needs to be submitted to regulatory authority. And that time can be seen from the work list. In the open cases, it will show that, okay, this case is now three days old or 10 days old, so that those cases can be prioritized according to the due date of the submission. It will only show you the items that are relevant to you. Relevant means if you want to see the open cases only, it will show that, not other thing. Now, new work list unassigned cases or cases that have been assigned but not accepted. So new work list means any new case is created in the Argus, but it is not assigned to a particular associate to complete that or to document the case. Only those cases will be seen in new work list. So that you can, the manager or the supervisor can act on it and assign it to the particular associate so that the data entry or the case processing can be done. Same way, the open work list will show that the cases that are assigned to the person, but still open. An action item shows that if there are any action item pending for that particular case, action item means if anything is required to do in that case. For example, if any follow-up is needed. For example, if any uh, triggered event uh, questions need to be sent to the HCP or to the patient. So all those things are seen in the action items. Filtering, as the name suggests, it will filter the things, whatever you require. It, it has multiple filters. You can search it through case number. You can search it through the work list. You can search it through the due dates. Anything that you want to search accordingly, it requires a filter to be put in and the required case numbers or cases will be seen on the screen. So it is very, uh, I would say, very important function of the safety database because it will allow the user to only look for his or her cases that are still pending. It will allow the managers to look for the cases which are not acted upon for multiple days. 
if anything is due today or due uh, in near future, all those will be reflected. Okay. Now here comes the work that a farm vigilance associate will do. First of all, if any new case is assigned to that associate, that associate need to accept that case first. When he accepts that case, that case will be tagged to that associate name, and the associate will be able to work on that to do the particular data entry, review, whatever the steps required for that. Without accepting the case in safety database, that person will not be able to do any changes. In that. Okay. And it is done by clicking the right click on that case, and you will see the, see the option read only open in read only will accept the case and all so here you will have the accept case option you will accept the case and then start working on it. any questions till this slide from anybody no sir okay now we have a tab in the case okay it's not the argus tab argus home page tab it is the case tab when you open a case it have different tabs in it so one of the tab is additional information tab so here in this tab you will put all the uh, other details about that case other details means not related to the adverse event for example any notes you want to put or any comments you want to put any reference numbers any uh, source document numbers, AE numbers, or any other details or reference IDs you want to put, you will put in additional information tab. Because when you receive a case, it will have reference numbers from, might be from clinical trial side, might be from the uh, different surveys site that the uh, particular company will have, or may have the literature number on it article numbers, so all those things you can put here. You can put any extra comments you want to put in. Like if you have uh, done something, if you have uh, coded a particular uh, adverse event to a medical, uh, particular medical terminology, and you want to explain it why you have done it, you, you will do it in additional information tab. 